I think a lot of women look at it and they're like, I'm a great woman. And because I know I'm so great, you might not see it now, but I know that I can get this, this relationship in the direction that I want it to go in. And so, yeah, I mean, I think a large part of it is ego, partly denial. But then I think that some women honestly like the feeling of being needed. What's up, Bravehearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of It's Scary to Mary wanting you to love fearlessly. We have a special guest with us. Today's guest is a content creator. She's a YouTuber. I have found her on We Need to Talk pro uh, program uh, with Alan. So shout out to Alan. We both had the opportunity to be on the show as well. That's where I found her. And she has more than 20,000 YouTube subscribers. She's killing the game. So make sure you go hit the subscribe after you watch this interview. Matter of fact, go just go do it now. Um, <laughs> I love what she's doing to promote healthy relationships. Brave Hearts community, let's show some love to Tynesha. How are you doing today? Wow, that was a very impressive intro. Like I feel like I really have to live up to this in this conversation, but... <laughs> I'm doing good. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. Yeah, you, you're going to live up to it because you've been doing this for so long. This is probably like second nature to you, right? <laughs> it does. It's starting to feel like second nature. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, first of all, shout out to Alan once again for allowing us both to be on this platform and to be able to touch as many people. I love your videos there. I love your transparency, your honesty, and just being a voice for healthy relationships because we need more people like you. Uh, we need a lot of healing. We need a lot of healing is what we need. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, let me kind of jump into this because I was watching one of your videos and we talked about uh, promoting healthy relationships. And when I comment in the comment section, I said, we can create change in our culture by promoting content like yours and so many others that doesn't get the attention that they deserve. And we kind of had this conversation and then you talked about the algorithms do you think algorithms will support it and i said yeah algorithms doesn't have a choice to support it because uh people are sharing and watching and the time increases our people need to promote healthy contents and you was talking about uh you was kind of a little jaded about that yes so yes. let's jump into that <laughs> Um, I don't know. You could call me a conspiracy theorist, but I do feel like what we see in algorithms, it's more divisive than it is beneficial. It's like you really, really have to be proactive about digging for the information to find it. I just don't think kind of like what you were saying, they would have no choice but to support if people watched it. I think it, we're having a hard time with our content reaching people because, well, for a couple of reasons, the algorithm. But then I also think that some creators they kind of get discouraged because this type of content isn't always the most lucrative. And so they might go with, you know, what's trending, having the shock value, saying things that are controversial that they might not resonate with because that's what's getting the paycheck. So it's like a, a balance of those things. Yeah, I understand. Well, and, and you have good numbers, right? You have over 20,000. You're you're in a very small group of, of creators, right to have the numbers that you have especially speaking of healthy content so how how did you get there mm -hmm. and i believe that you have a <clears throat> a decent sized following where people are craving the content that you're giving so how did you get there um honestly just being more strategic with how i put my content out cuz my content it really hasn't change per se. So quality changes and things like that, but the actual meat and potatoes of the content hasn't shifted a lot. Um, I will say like YouTube shorts helps. I've realized that people, they have really short attention spans nowadays. So if you can chop it up in little pieces, then they'll come and they want to check out more of your content. But really just being consistent. Um, one thing that I do on my channel is I try to respond to every comment. It does get difficult nowadays, but just building that rapport, that engagement with people, that helps as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I seen you were <laughs> you were one of the people who commented on my wife's video on the We Need to Talk. And I was like, ooh, a positive comment. Let me respond. <laughs> Need a little haystack, yes. <laughs> 
So uh, when I when I found that, I was like, wait a minute, I need to look at her channel. Let me see, because she's being, you know, she's being positive and uplifting. So and, and that's how uh, I found you. And it was hooked on your content. I would like to ask you who 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 invested time in you to become that the woman you are today? Mm, oh, that's a good question. Um. I would kind of say that the person who I am today was the result of people not investing time for me to become the person who I am today, if that makes sense. And so I just, I felt like I grew up with very little guidance. I kind of observed things that I noticed people did right, some things that I disagreed with. And so I kind of put together my own value system. But a lot of it is just uh, learning from mistakes, which I'm still doing. I'm not perfect by any means, so I still mess up, but I try to pivot um, and therapy, you know, I think therapy is a, a huge thing, just being able to really break down your experiences, understand how it shapes you today and come up with the game plan for moving forward. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been in therapy, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, I know you're good. Um, I think my therapy journey started around 20... 17 ish, I would say 2017. Um, it's been off and on. I relocated from New York to Georgia, so I had to find a new therapist and things like that, but around 2017. Hmm. Okay, so you've been doing the work for a while now. Uh, yeah, you know, and it's like the thing with doing work though, it's frustrating because you want to be done with it. No one's ever really done, right? Because I don't think any person is ever 100% healed, but I find that you get placed into different situations and you're like, okay, yep, that's something that I didn't realize before. I need to work on that. So it was just like a, a never ending journey. <laughs> yeah. And no, I get it. I always tell people that we're all beautifully broken. So take your pick. Yes. You yes, know? absolutely. Yeah. We're like, we're looking for the perfect relationship. I'm like, nobody's perfect. You know? <laughs> exactly. If they were perfect, would they want you? <laughs> oh, ooh, that's the real tea. Oh my goodness. Yes. The real yeah. question. <laughs> yeah, right. No, this is this is 46 years of life. I'm just saying. Um, oh, you look good, dog. The, bl the black thank don't you. Break. Yeah, you look amazing. <laughs> thank you. Uh the wife does a good job of taking care of me. Uh yeah, she does a good job of trying to keep me. I'm 12 years older than her. Okay. Yeah, so um I'm trying to stay young and keep up with, with you youngsters. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> For sure. What do you think is the biggest mistake you see women make in relationships? Ooh, um, I think one of one of the biggest mistakes is that we we make very emotional decisions. And I think we make emotional decisions because we're viewing certain things from the lens of how we think and navigate as women without fully understanding how men navigate and why they do the things they do. Hmm. That's heavy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I need to dig deeper in this because this is good. Yeah. There was, I don't know if you've seen it, but there was a viral video that's going around my old pastor back in Cleveland. I'm from Ohio. Uh, uh, Dr. Vernon, he was talking about, the way he worded it, it was in a YouTube short. So, of course, people took the sound bite instead of watching the whole video mm -hmm. ran with it and, and tore the video to pieces. And he was saying, besides a woman having a bad body, what else do you have to offer? Mm -hmm. So people got upset about that. Like, oh, we, we talking about this and, you know, we still talking about what do you have to offer and all these different things. But what he was saying was he was trying to really give guys game like look further than the physical is the physical important of course but that's what trips up a lot of men mm -hmm. you know they think that okay well once you have a bad body everything else falls in place and i'm just like uh there's so much more but the reason i was saying this was because as as men i think we need to take a little more time to invest uh in deeper matters than just the physical mm-hmm having the deeper conversations, you know, se the sex is going to be there, right? But what can we do? Can we have a deeper conversation? Can I get to know you on a deeper level? Uh, can we talk about, you know, past relationships or maybe childhood traumas and how we deal with things? I'm saying all this to say, do you think those questions are too deep to ask like during the infancy stages of dating? 
No, no, I don't. And that's the thing. And that's what really, really blows my mind because some people are weird about having those conversations too soon, but then sex itself is happening really fast. And I'm like, why is, why is sex being put on such a, a, a smaller pedestal? Like we're minimizing that level of intimacy, but I can't ask you about your past situations, what you've learned, what your childhood is like, it's backwards. It is backwards. And if we ask those questions earlier on, we wouldn't be wasting time and potentially having sex with people who are not compatible with us, but we're avoiding those conversations. Ooh, that's a, that's a bar. <laughs> that's a YouTube short within itself. Right yes, there. yes. <laughs> that will preach. And like you said, because it's easier just to have sex than to have these conversations because people are honestly worried, like, Oh, do I, I'm feeling like I'm being inspector gadget or I'm, I'm trying to be this inspector early in a relationship. Like, am I going too hard too early? But we still give people access to our bodies quicker than the questions. Well, yeah. And I think a, a big part of that is that we all know we have our things. Right. And they say that when you first start dating someone, you're dating their representative. And so I think a lot of people are afraid to be honest about those things. Like I struggle with this. You know, I'm not good at this. I'm working on this because it they might get perceived negatively. And so I think that's a, a big thing about it. You can judge me on my sexual skills and I might be really, really good at that, mm -hmm. but I'm not confident about who I am as a person. And I know that there's things that I have to work on. So I'm not going to talk about those things. Mm. Wow. Yeah. I call it the Macy's representative. <laughs> the Macy's representative. Yeah. Yeah. It's about it, accurate. <laughs> yeah. Right. Cause you know, you in the mall, and you're walking past and, and a lady, she's beautiful and she smells good and she's nice. And, you know, it's just like, oh, my God, I can't help but to put on the makeup or or try to yeah. perfume, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about this algorithm thing because I know for me, for a minute, I used to think that I was getting shadow banned because I was like, I know because I'm an equal opportunity employer. Right. Like if you're a man or a woman, if you are here messing up, you both can get it. I'm, I'm yeah. not just like trying to talk bad about women. No, if you're a man and, and actually I hold men to a higher uh, degree, because I think as men, if we're supposed to be leaders, change start starts with us. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not saying that women shouldn't be accountable because uh, I've been called uh, uh, the beta relationship coach. OK, <laughs> I've been called a simp too. People love using the word simp. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm simp. Yeah, that might as well be my middle name by now. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my god. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I, I, for a while, I thought my videos were getting shadow banned. But I think if we share the content, because like you said, it is a little harder for people to find our content. But if they're subscribed to our channels. Mm -hmm. shouldn't they be able to consume and then i tell people too with relation people complain about relationships but what is in your feed because people say i don't see healthy relationships well who are you subscribed to right you know what i'm saying so yeah i, I think i think we have to be a little more intentional and in sharing more relate uh relationship stuff content like yours uh, even content like mine so i think if we do that we can really i think that's how we change the algorithm do you think so or no? I agree. I mean, I think in general, just we as people, we need to probably mix up what we're searching or kind of adjust things. Because, you know, they have the settings where you could say, I don't want to see this type of content, unfollowing certain things. But I think the problem is that we, <laughs> it's like, um, we, so we complain about the content, but subconsciously, I think some people are addicted to it right so it's like no but I want to be able to tap into these things when I want to like if I feel like debating real quick I want to be able to do that but not too much and I think you just got to kind of pick your poison because that's how the algorithm knows what to push out to you but I agree um I think that you know people for example with me they resonate with my content they respect what I talk about if I share your content they'll probably look at it like oh, okay well, I like how she thinks and she shared this person. So I'll probably resonate with them. And yes, I do think that we just, we got to support one another out here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think if we make that change and <clears throat> also, and I tell people, if you're dramatic, if you like drama, be honest about that. Mm -hmm. You know, that I just like being messy because being in healthy relationships is boring. You know, D be honest. Yeah. Don't say you want a, a a man of God and then, or you want a woman of God, but you're the total opposite. 
That's real. But I mean, I feel like so many people do that though. We we always say what we want because I think we hear what we're supposed to want, right? Mm -hmm. So men might hear a certain type of woman they're supposed to go after. Women might think they have to have a certain kind of man who sounds good on paper. But a lot of things that we were talking about, the traumas, your past experiences, that kind of shapes who you actually go after. Mm -hmm. So it's a, I think it's an internal battle for a lot of people for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And the honesty is is important because we drag people into relationships that we like to say we put on a salesperson, drag mm -hmm. them into the relationship, come to find out they're full of drama. And then, mm -hmm. you know, it's like we chew people up and spit them out and then they become products of who they've been with. Yeah. I also think that people pedestalize people as well. Mm. And I, I try to talk and I, I've been talking, I'm like, please don't look at me like I'm perfect. When men say things, oh, I just think you're so perfect, but I'm not. Like, I really don't want you to walk into this situation with having unrealistic expectations of me because I'm going to disappoint you if you think that way. And I, I think a large part of it is what looks good. You know, if this person looks good and they have half of a brain at least, okay, I'm going to think <laughs> positive things about you, right? And I don't factor in all the other things that might come along with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty <laughs> Dumpty had a great fall, you know. Great fall, yes. <laughs> a great fall. And I, like you said, pedestal, like putting people on that pedestal. And I had to realize that myself, that no one is perfect because the fall is great once you realize that they're broken just like you. You're like, how? Mm -hmm. How could you have disappointed me? I always tell people two things you can get relationships is grace and space. Mm. You know, that's right. That's a word. Yeah. Give me some grace. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Give me yeah. some space. Yeah, for sure. I ask this in, in every episode. I would love to hear uh, what you have to say about this. From seeing your parents relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? Oh, boy. Oh, that's a good question. Um, So my parents had a very interesting dynamic because my dad wanted to both of my parents were married previously before they met each other wow. and so my dad wanted to marry my mom and my mom was just like not with it so they were together for a very long time but never got married I think in general just relationships or even extending into marriage it's taught me the importance of having your own identity and not feeling like you need to depend on somebody to make you whole because I think when you're operating in that space where you're not coming where you're able to pour from a full cup, you'll attract toxic situations. So they had a very codependent type of relationship in multiple different ways. So I think one of the biggest things for me is like, I want to know myself, be comfortable with myself before I become enmeshed in someone else's life. Mm -hmm. No, that's good. Yeah, there's no right or wrong answer. I just like to ask it because I, I like to ask because I believe a lot of people, what we see is what we have a tendency to emulate if mm -hmm. you aren't um, aware, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah, and then, and then even unlearning, like there's a lot of things we need to unlearn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So tying into like the codependency or uh, a lot of women struggle with feeling like you need to be a healer. You need to help every man that you meet. Like he's not perfect, but I can get him there. And it was so interesting because um, I, I recently posted like a short about this and then someone commented and they were like, don't mother a man. If you do that, he's going to end up resenting you because you remind him of who he used to be. And they were like, be a support system, but don't mother him. And so it was very interesting to see that type of feedback. Cause I think a, a lot of women, we do try to, to mother men. Mm. Let's go a little deeper. Why yeah. though? Because <laughs> for the most part, men, now there are the exceptions. So before anybody in the comments say something, wow. There are exceptions where some women feel like they have to mother. I mean, men feel like they want to be mother kind of thing. But do women believe that they can really change men in relationships? Do women go in believing like I'm going to make him into the person I want him to be? It's like yes and no, right? Because I feel like a large part of it is an ego thing. I think a lot of women look at it and they're like, I'm a great woman. And because I know I'm so great, you might not see it now, but I know that I can get this, this relationship in the direction that I want it to go in. And so, yeah, I mean, I think a large part of it is ego, partly denial. But then I think that some women honestly like the feeling of being needed. And that's why some women, they don't feel comfortable 
being with a man who already has all his stuff together and it's intimidating for them. So it's like, I can go for this man who needs me if he needs me. Again, that codependency is there. And then maybe he's more likely to stay with me because he needs something from me in order for him to self-sustain. Mm. Yeah. So it's true then. So so most women do go into <laughs> See, and that's why I said yes and no, because like I think a lot your brain tells you certain kind of things, but a lot of it is rooted in denial and trying to protect your ego. So I think if women really sat down and had these honest conversations with ourselves for why we do that, it would uncover that. But as a way to have like a coping mechanism or again defending our ego, we convince ourselves of these things. Mm. But women have egos too. Oh, oh my God, all humans have egos. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for being honest because a lot of times we always talk about, you know, the man ego and we got to protect his ego and all this other stuff, but women have it too. Yeah. Hmm, okay. Because I think that alone can change the dynamic when it comes to relationships hmm. because people are going to be who they are. I, I always tell people that you can't change people, but you can influence them. Mm-hmm. You know, because I, I was married for 15 years. I don't know if you know that whole backstory, but I was married for 15 years before going through a divorce. Um, <clears throat> and so what you're saying now is a total rebrand. Mm-hmm. Something totally different. Uh, hence, scary to be married, right? But I remember, <laughs> I remember going into this marriage thinking I cannot change her. It's best that that I let her be who she is and love her for who she is and help help her become the person who she wanted to become opposed to me trying to force her to become who I wanted to become. And that's good. You know, I think it's good that you, you talked about grace and, you know, just giving people room to improve. But I think a large problem is that a lot of people just don't want to do that at all. And I've had to kind of learn that about myself. Like I, I am a perfectionist within myself. And so I have very unrealistic expectations of other people And so if you didn't meet the expectation that I had, then I just didn't want to deal with you. But now I kind of have the mindset where it's like, if you, I generally care about people. If you came into my presence and we had a pretty good interaction, if it's something that I can help you become aware of, because a lot of people do things and they don't even know that they're doing it. And so I think you interacting with them, making them see it. Okay. You presented it to them and now they know how to move forward if they choose to grow or not. But at least I did my work and I told you what I observed so that you can grow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause we should be able to help each other grow at the end of the day. Like we should be able to look out for each other. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's important to marry somebody who can see your blind spots. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yes. <laughs> you know, and, and being able to have those conversations because uh, my wife and I, sometimes we have these conversations and, and, and they get heated and it's mm. just like, you know what? It, adversity is good because it helps you to grow that muscle. Mm-hmm. That tension helps you to grow that muscle. So you know how to fight fair. Mm hmm. Because if you're not having, not saying that you should always be arguing or disagreeing, but it just helps you to understand each other on a deeper level. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that people aren't willing to have that type of dialogue or why is it so difficult for people nowadays? One is ego. We talked about that earlier. Mm -hmm. I think another one is who likes to be called out on the carpet when like who likes to be on in the petri dish dish like you know who wants to really take this time to let somebody dissect you now if you really believe that this person have your best interest i think it can be healthy mhm but if you're looking at your significant other as the enemy then that's when you're going to get defensive mm yeah yeah i think delivery is important too yeah um I think in general, we just struggle with communication. And so for a lot of people, communicating is my ability to tell people how I think and feel, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the other half of it is thinking about how the person is going to receive it or understanding that I might have to not change my message, but just adjust my delivery so that you can receive the message. That's the part that I don't think a lot of us focus on. Mm -hmm. So how do you, so where do you feel like in your communication skills when it comes to, 
<laughs> comes to dating or I don't know your relationship status, but how, how do you feel like where you're at in communication? Do you feel like you're doing a great job? Do you feel like you need more help? Let's let's talk about it. Oh, I know for me, it's definitely it's, it's going to be a work in progress for a while. Um, I am single to answer your question. Okay. Um, I think that I've definitely seen improvement. So before I was the person who would internalize everything and I would see things that I didn't really like. It bothered me. I would make a mental note, but not bring it up because I didn't like to have conflict or confrontation with people. And then I would kind of get turned off by the person, but the whole time they're unaware that they're making me mad, right? Mm -hmm. So then I'm like, okay, that's not cool. So maybe I should start being able to vocalize things. So now I'm in that space where I'm learning, one, how to receive criticism from people without being defensive, but also present it to other people in a way where I know they won't get defensive. And that's the the practice part. I think, like you said, it's building a muscle. So that's the part that I'm, I'm constantly <laughs> working mm -hmm. to grow. <laughs> No, I love that. I, I appreciate the transparency because, you know, somebody in the in the uh, comment section might be like, hey, I'm great at communication. How you doing, Tanisha? Mm -hmm. How you doing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think good. everybody thinks that they're better at communication than they really might be. Say that. I'm mm -hmm. so yes, I, I totally agree because I know I've sucked for years and even still learning. And are you aware of the have you seen like the. Uh, the feelings wheel like the, it's this well, wheel mm -hmm. that in the middle of the wheel it's like sad happy joyful but then there's another branch that's like expressing if you're sad then it's like i feel uh, anxious so it's like <clears throat> it's giving you deeper words to use to express yourself opposed to just saying that i'm angry mm. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm learning over time is when I'm talking to my wife and I'm like, I'm pissed off instead of me saying I'm pissed off. I'm like, you know, I feel abandoned right now mm. or I feel vulnerable. So when I'm using those words, it changes the dance instead of us just having this this roundabout conversation because I'm mad. If you use those those deeper words it just makes you want to listen more because you're using a different vocabulary i agree i agree so i think some people if they just hear mad i think I, people all of a sudden will be on guard because that's just a word that has a negative connotation but like you said if you go deeper it it removes that sense of needing to be defensive but also it gives people a little bit more room to understand where you're coming from so i think that's one of my biggest frustrations when i'm having a conflict with someone where it's like I'm frustrated. Okay. Well, can you break down why you're frustrated? Like help me understand how we got to this point instead of just saying you're frustrated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and that's good in itself because I've learned too that having those conversations instead of saying you made you made me upset when, instead of starting the sentence like that, start the sentence with, I feel because the minute you say you, yeah, you know, the whole you, I mean, you didn't turn into Iron Man. You mm -hmm. were quiet. <laughs> <laughs> like, why are you coming for me like that? I feel like you're coming for me. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, because uh, in our marriage class, they call them pain cycles. Mm. And, you know, it's this constant conversation of negative conversations that we have and the way that you <laughs> make me feel opposed to just saying I feel. Mm. So. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, uh, I'm learning so much. I'm I'm trying to, and that's why I have you on the show because I'm trying to learn from uh, the best. So, yeah, oh, thank you. <laughs> no, for real, love the content. Is it easier to love yourself or love someone else? Ooh, is this like a general outlook or just for me personally? This is for you personally. Hmm. I would say... And there's no wrong answer. Yeah, I'm trying to reflect because I feel like in different phases of my life, I probably my answer would bounce around. Mm. But overall, I would say that it, it was probably easier for me to love other people. Okay. And, and can I, you talk about it? Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that it kind of goes back to what we were saying before about accepting the flaws that you might have and it being tied into your ego. Because I think in order for you to fully 
love yourself. You have to fully know who you are. You know what I'm saying? And so I have to know the good, the bad, the ugly. And so for a lot of times in my life, I'm like, again, I'm a perfectionist. So if there are a lot of things I saw that were negative qualities, it's like, I'm not happy about that because I'm not meeting this bar up here. And so I might not like myself right now. But in the flip side, I think that I gave other people a little bit more grace. And I think that was kind of like the healing aspect, like I mentioned before, where it's like, I want to help you. I want to help you develop into being this great person who I see potential in. And that made me feel like I had love for that person. And so it's felt like a feeling of love toward other people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, because internally, you know yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and why is it easier for us to give grace to other people opposed to ourselves? Ooh. You know, I don't know, because some people might argue it's the reverse. I, I know for me, I feel that way. But I think mm -hmm. a, a lot of people, um, they are more, they're quicker to give justifications for what they do. But when it comes to other people, that grace is not there. So Ooh. I don't know. I, I guess I would question, is it happening more that way? Or are we giving other people grace more so than we do ourselves? Ooh, that's a good one. I didn't think about it like that. Yeah. That's true because things that we do, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But if somebody else did it, we would judge them. Like, why would you do such a thing? But you did it. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. I don't look that like that. That's that's good. Hmm. Dang. Well, maybe I need to. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think though? So I guess the, the first question, which one do you think happens more frequently? Um. For me or in general? Um, I guess in general. I think from from the people that I've interviewed, because I ask this question on every show, mm -hmm. from what I've seen is more people love them, more people find it easier to love other people than themselves mm -hmm. because internally they know themselves. Just like me and you talking right now, there's there's things that's going on in your world that I have no idea of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's easier to kind of judge yourself, but to talk to somebody else and uh, love on them is easy because you can say if, if it's that say like their love language is acts of service, it's easy for you to just go do that. Right. And then they're like, oh, I feel loved because you did it for somebody else. Mm -hmm. but I think to love on yourself I think it just looks different for each person mm. okay you know I think that looks different because for me loving on myself is uh doing stuff like this mm -hmm. like I, I love to collaborate with great minds I love to create content so to me my wife and kids are gone right now because they giving me the space to me that's her showing her she loved me right you know, because she let me operate in that. So um, and I don't know if that answers your question or not. But from what I've seen over time is that people say one lady, she told me, she said it was easier for her to love other people when she was overweight. When she lost weight, it was easier to love herself. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So that kind of tied. So obviously that was something that was like a deep rooted insecurity within herself. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I think a lot of us are are battling those things internally. And so it's really, really hard for us to, to accept it. But then it's like, at the same time, <laughs> then we go for people. We often attract people who mirror ourselves in some way, right? So if I'm feeling like I have a lot of insecurities or things I need to work on, we're probably attracting other people in that regard. So why do we give, back to your question, grace to those people that are still inherently flawed? We're flawed too, but we don't so, show ourselves that same type of love yeah i think a lot of it is just like self-discovery and because when i asked you the question before i think you were saying like looking at yourself in different phases of your life mm -hmm. uh, because I, I posted on twitter the other day i said i think the people that we date <clears throat> we date people according to our confidence level mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know so a lot of times we're in these different pockets so I don't know. I just think it just depends on where you're at in life. Yeah. You know, um, no shade to any of my exes, but the woman I'm married to now is based on my confidence level. 
know, I, I, I think she's the baddest chick in the game. Yeah. But it's based on my confidence level. When I look at myself 10, well, yeah, 15, 20 years ago, it's just like, oh, I could have done better. Mm. Oh, that's real. Yeah, that's right. But it's real. based on yeah. it's based on the way I feel about myself. Mm hmm. Because if you do, you wouldn't allow certain things to happen and stuff like that. But then some of it might come with age and maturity. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. What That's real. Yeah, I think it does come with age and maturity. Um, then I'm like, eh, I know some people who are, they're still, they're older than me, older than you. And they're still kind of struggling with that. So I think, uh, I guess age, maturity wisdom i think wisdom is a huge thing because with wisdom in order for you to get to that point it's a lot of self-reflection but then just understanding how people operate in general um and i think that some people once they're older they're fixed in their ways and so mm. they're very resistant to change so that that wisdom can come at at different points in life honestly i think it really just has to come with you feeling like you are really fed up with being in the space that you're in and nobody can force anybody to get to that point. You have to want it for yourself. And then when you realize, Hey, things aren't working, I'm repeating the same cycles. Like it's a lesson I'm obviously not learning. Then I think you'll go into that path of self-discovery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's important. I think is, and that's why I asked you the question earlier, like who helped form you into the person that you are today? Because mm -hmm. I think uh, community is important. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I still believe we are tribal people. When you use the word tribal, I think we think of like the old days when people are, you know, stone age kind of days, but I think we're tribal today. Like we're all a group of people who want to be connected in community. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really didn't care for that R and B artist, but now that Tanisha like it and you're telling me about it now, I might end up liking them because, you know, so now we connected, we got that community. Right. Um, but I think it's important that we get around some people who have wisdom, like you said, mm -hmm. and have people that can invest and in sow in us because uh, I think Google has replaced mentors. Woo! Speak on it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is a double edged sword, though, right? Because we're, we're grateful for Google because people can look up healthy relationships and find you. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So mm -hmm. you can be a mentor from a distance. That's true. That is true. It's interesting because I, I recently asked the question and I think it was when you think about your parents, were they mentors to you or do you find yourself trying to be the opposite of who they are? And the responses to that, it was so sad. Like, I feel like most people are operating in this space of trying to be the opposite trying to make generational curses. And they might, again, kind of like I said earlier, there's some things that you feel they did okay, some things that you don't agree with. But I think it's just tough when it's like you're the first people that you're experiencing that should be shaping your value system. You're trying to be the opposite of them. That's mm -hmm. tough. That's deep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I wouldn't want to be like my parents because I, and, and no shade to mom, because sometimes she'd be watching and listening. So no shade, mom, I love you. <laughs> but <laughs> like when I grew up I didn't get a lot of love and affection I didn't get that mm -hmm. uh, my mom was you know I grew up in the 90s hip-hop era so it was just like we had to grow up hard so I didn't get a lot of love and, and, and attention and stuff so with my boys now I try to make sure I'm hugging on them and kissing them and trying to do all that stuff because I realized how important love is considering that I didn't get it mm. Do you think that's why, could that be a reason why people tend to love on other people more than themselves? Because you're trying to pull that love that you didn't get from the other person. Ooh, good stuff. Yeah, I believe that. I, I, I do. Because, I, yeah, because even with my boys, I, I every day I think I'm not going to do what happened to me. Like every day I think mm -hmm. about that. Um, because for me, I realized from the love that I, I feel like this is a therapy session. I had therapy yesterday <laughs> and I'm just like, <laughs> every day can be therapy when you learn it from other people. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Now you got me thinking, but I, I, yeah, I, I think that because I realized that 
it stunted my growth and how to love effectively mm -hmm. because I didn't get it. I felt like my love was just based on what I can do for you opposed to who I am. Mm, yeah. You know, just loving me for who I am opposed to <laughs> what I can bring to the table. And I'm throwing on my air quotes for those who might be listening in the podcast world. Yeah. Yeah. Then that's awesome. So I feel like I'm making connections to everything, but it's like, again, if a person, um, if they're not confident with who they are, then they will rely on those other actions of what they can do because me just being me who I am, that's not enough in my head. So I have to do these other things just so that you will see me as a valuable person. I think some of that come from me. <laughs> I had this conversation the other day. Okay, yeah. I'm not going to hold you forever because I, <laughs> I, I, told, I told one of... My other guest one day, I said, I'm not going to hold you forever. And we had a two hour and 25 minute call. Like That was beautiful. Yeah. She was, matter of fact, she was on We Need to Talk. Her name was Kiana. I'm not sure if I've seen that one. Then again, yeah. I know what people look like more so than their name. So <laughs> yeah, if you've seen yeah. her, yeah, she, yeah, I had her. So anyway, I'm going to respect your time. Um, where was we going? I was going to say something. Oh my God. You said something about, oh, I forgot. Right? Oh, when you're not comfortable with yourself, you feel like you have to do extra things so that people see value in you. Oh, yeah. I had a whole conversation about that with a friend of mine. And I think a lot of that comes from, I know for men, I don't know for women, but when we meet men for the first time, the first thing we ask is, what do you do for a living? Mm -hmm. So we tie what we do based on who we are. Mm -hmm. I know for men, for the most part, uh, instead of asking like, who are you? Because who are you takes away all your degrees and your houses and your cars. Like, who are you apart from your stuff? Mm -hmm. And very few people can differentiate who they are opposed to their possessions. Mm. So, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So I think some men, because uh, if I tell you I'm... I work with, uh, if I tell you I'm an owner of a 500, Fortune 500 company, your respect for me is different opposed to if I said I work at Wendy's. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so I think it's based on a lot of times what we do opposed to who we are. Yeah, I would say, uh, I mean, I've met a lot of women where it's that way as well, too. Mm. Um, I was reading this book. And the the name of it escapes me, but it's a really good book. And it basically talked about the impacts of fatherlessness on women. And one of the things that it said was like the reason why a lot of women who didn't have a father or just a positive male figure present go so hard for education, you know, having status in that way is because you're overcompensating for feelings that you weren't good enough for your father to stick around, right? So I think a lot of it is just overcompensating for internal deficiencies that we have mm. yeah this is deep <laughs> there's so much stuff to think about in this context yeah, i know i and, know yeah because at the end of the day i do think we do overcompensate because it's easier to to flex like that like i have this i have that you know and and people automatically want to be around us because they assume but there's millionaires that commit suicide yeah you know, mm -hmm. I think I think it's important. And even I'm still learning this to this day. I think it's important that we find uh, peace and and self-worth uh, from within. It's an inside job. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, but if we grow up based on I got to go get it. And if we grow up like that, it's hard to to unearth that and then be like, oh, it's really an inside job. I need to care about it. <laughs> it's harder that way, you know? Exactly. Did, did you grow up like that? Was it more of about like be strong, be independent? Was, was that the the process <laughs> of growing up? Um, you know, I feel like y yes, y yes, yes. So be strong, be independent. Um, And I don't know if it was out of, messaging that I got I mean you'll hear some women saying you know go to school be this don't focus on x y and z right but I think that when you grow up in a dynamic that is 
dysfunctional or if you have any sort of trauma when you grow up, you learn that you have to look out for yourself is literally in a, a survival mode. So you're growing up in a state of survival where it's like, I have to do this. I have to do this because I need this to actually survive as a human being. So yeah, being depend independent because you feel like you can't rely on people and going hard just to, again, escape generational curses. Yes. Yeah, I think it's ingrained. So do you think that's what damages most relationships because we are independent of each other? Yeah, and I think that, um, okay, so for example, if you have a man or a woman, because I like to be equal as well, mm -hmm. the people who are very loud and proud and screaming that they don't need men or women, but how, you know, vice versa, I think some of that could be rooted in trauma because it's easier. That's when that ego kicks in for me to say, I don't need you versus I'm actually very scared that if I get close to you, you might leave me. So I just say that I don't need you. And so, yes, I think we're operating in fear, but we're also too scared to have those conversations and be vulnerable for people to understand why we feel that way. Mm, yeah. Because you can't have a healthy relationship without vulnerability. Mm -hmm. and, True. Um, I'll tell people I need my wife and they like, you're a simp. I'm like, crazy. is that the default setting just for you? <laughs> is it like if you is, is it like if you take a test, you know, you have a multiple choice answer and D is like all the above? Would like D be like simp? Like <laughs> I think so. And I just I'm so unclear on the word simp because my understanding was just like it's a guy who's going above and beyond to try to get the attention for women who don't want him, right? So he's doing the most. And I'm like, but this is someone's wife. Like she chose it. They chose each other. So how are you a simp for your wife? I just don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. <sighs> that's the, yeah, I think that's the culture that we live in. Um, and unfortunately, it's easy to build a platform full of bitter people. Mm-hmm. It, it's very easy if you can be the 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 salesman for bitter relationships it's easy but to discuss the things that we do is a certain degree of vulnerability and it's helping jail relationships in a culture that's all of about independent yeah yeah I think when you're just in such a such a rut or a state of unhappiness just very dark it's hard for you to see any form of light. It's kind of like when you think about people who hate their job and they have other coworkers who hate their job. And so they come together and they talk, this place sucks. Like they just have that trauma bonding moment. Yeah. That's kind of how I feel it's happening. Like people are frustrated about relationships and they're coming together online. Um, one, it's easier to, to bond with people in that way online because you're not really vocalizing what you feel, which we know we all struggle with. But I can type some stuff and it's easier for me to type negative things than it is for me to hear the good in situations. Mm -hmm. So as we get ready to end this show, uh, I think this has been a phenomenal. So there's a lot of questions that I'm just like, <laughs> we could keep going. There's so much. I know. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to do this again. Yes. Give me, give us to those who are watching and listening, some of your tips you think that can help men and women become better as far as relationship wise. Like what can we do to have more healthy relationships? Mm. self-awareness I think is a, a huge thing and there's so many different components of that but overall just understanding who you are how you feel and how we, the way that you behave is impacting other people I think that's huge and a lot of it is being open to receive criticism which might not always be good but just being open to the feedback from other people and creating a, a safe space where people feel like they can approach you and tell you things without you attacking them or getting super defensive. So I think that's the biggest thing. Um, the second thing, like you said, grace, because I think a lot of us are guilty of expecting people to give us grace. Like we, we acknowledge that we might have our things, but we don't always give other people the same in return. So I guess just trying to break it down from a human standpoint to be like, okay, you might do some things that I don't necessarily agree with, but my background is also different than yours. So just really seeking to understand why people are the way they are versus judging them based on why they are the way they are. And then I think, you know, if you can start with those things and then just have open dialogue, I think that would be beautiful. Mm -hmm. But the last point, and this is something that I feel like 
we talked about those lessons that you have to keep learning, understanding that just because you see potential in someone or you might like them because they have positive characteristics, they might not be compatible with you. So you might learn who that person is and you have to be okay with walking away because that's who they are and you can't focus on the idea of who they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because just because he's a good man doesn't mean he's your man. Exactly. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad you broke that down. That is so good. Because I think if we take the time to listen to each other when it comes to relationships. So if you are speaking about what what a woman need, opposed to me being defensive, let me actually listen to what you have to say. Right. You know, I think that's where most people. But as I always say, a hit dog will holler. If you say something and you just keeping it 100, people will come for you. And it's like, no, just take some time to listen because she's trying to give you game. Right. Yeah. A big thing, too, just letting go of the need to be right. Mm. Like, I feel like we get so fixated on the fact, like, I have a point in my head, and I know I'm right, that even if somebody is trying to explain something to us, we focus on what we think, and the person is giving you, like, a, a valid justification or explaining their side, and we're not receptive to it. Yeah, because we got to hold on to what we believe, mm -hmm. you know, and instead of just unlearning, we just like, no, this is the way I believe and I don't care what you say. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, my God. This has been a phenomenal episode. I'm, I thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy day to be yeah. a guest. Well, Tanisha, let me acknowledge you for uh, being honest about your life about sharing great points when it comes to relationships. Uh, I think we need more voices like you out here. Uh, and I just want to acknowledge you for putting in the work to create the content and stay consistent with the channel because that takes work. I don't think people understand what goes on behind the scenes. It's a lot of work. A lot of work doing YouTube. If you're thinking about it, just be prepared. <laughs> yeah. But I yeah. thank you. I appreciate that. Or just, I mean, thank you for even listening and being receptive to my experiences. Even if my viewpoints might be different than yours, I think this was awesome. I felt like it was a very balanced dialogue. So thank you so much for that. No, for sure. I, I appreciate it. Thank you once again. Let everyone know how they can get in touch with you on social media. Yeah. So of course my YouTube channel, that's like my main baby. It's Tynesha Talks, all one word. My Instagram is Tynesha underscore Renee. So again, if you like transparent conversations, good vibes, just, you know, working for toward growth, change, positive motivation, then go ahead and check me out. Yes, for sure. Brave Arts community, you heard it here. Make sure you go subscribe, hit that channel, hit that subscribe link below. I'll, I'll have that linked up in the comment section. Uh, so you all make sure that you subscribe. If you're listening via podcast, uh, make sure you check out our channel as well. I'll have that linked in the description below as well, because um, we, we need more voices like you. And so continue to do what you do. I appreciate you so much because it's like we're drowning out here. We're trying to find healthy relationships. Everybody's always at odds against each other. Yes, yes. You know, so Brave Hearts community, you heard it here. If you're listening to this via podcast, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. Make sure that you share this with someone. One thing I realized is once once I when I realized that if you can get people your YouTube channel or your podcast in a group chat, mm. that's when it get to jump in. Because, okay. Yeah. Take a note. Take a note. <laughs> yeah. If you get in the group chat, it's on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you'll get those numbers. Yeah. So if you do leave a rating and review, that'll put you on a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free things? Make sure you hit the subscribe button on YouTube and share this video as well. This is Sean Heineman with special guest. Tynesha Renee with Tynesha Talk. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hey, appreciate it. Brave Hearts community. Take care. <laughs>